A recent survey suggests that Americans have a new fear to worry about, and it's causing anxiety attacks among some people. What is this new phobia that we dread? Well, it's the fear of global warming, and no wonder we're afraid. The national news media makes it sound as if global warming is responsible for an increase in the number of natural disasters like hurricanes and tornadoes. There has been another deadly indication of longer tornado seasons developing in this country. Many experts believe La Nina and global warming have already tended to make these freaking storms more frequent, causing longer, stronger tornado seasons. There's been so much written about global warming that many believe we are facing a cataclysm from which life will never recover. There was even a piece on the CBS Evening News blaming global warming for the increased number of Major League home runs this year. Can you say global warming? You're telling me that when the weather gets warmer, what happens to the ball? The ball gets a little bit more elastic, so when it hits the bat, it bounces off faster and you have a chance for a longer hit. Home runs because of global warming? Well, it's beginning to be too much. Up next, we're going to be talking with Chief Meteorologist Jay Hillgardner, who attended a conference last week where 250 scientists from around the country gathered at the University of Arkansas to discuss global warming. Are all these dire predictions just a bunch of media hype and hot air? That's next on 5 News at 5. Tonight's news is sponsored by Hanky Brothers, Siding and Windows Incorporated. Meteorologist uh, Jay Hillgardner joins us. Uh, we're going to be talking about global warming because there's been so much in the news for so long and everything's getting blamed on global warming. It, it is. It, and it's gotten at times to ridiculous lengths. I think particularly in the media uh, and in, in the major national media, I've even seen major winter snowstorms in the, in the Dakotas, you know, blamed on global warming. And, and you start to see, and there are things like what we saw there in that, uh, that sound bite where they say tornado outbreaks blamed on global warming. The I frequency guess. and the severity. Mm -hmm. And there are, there are virtually, to my knowledge, there are no studies that link increased severity of tornadoes with global warming. There's, in fact, there are several number of top studies done by numerous scientists, among them the hurricane expert William Gray on, on hurricanes. They haven't found any kind of increased uh, activity with regards to, uh, in the past 100 years, which has warmed up quite a bit in terms of hurricane or intensity of, you know, of hurricanes. And, and, they don't, and then they're saying it's extremely questionable whether they will be more frequent or more intense mm -hmm. in the future, even with global warming. But global warming does exist. Oh, yes. Yeah, and that's what they said at the conference. So. Yes, yes, it does, as a matter of fact. And uh, the conference, by the way, that, it, was a, it was the 16th biannual meeting of the Quaternary Association. American, and, and the Quaternary is a period of about the presence back to about 1.6 million years ago. Uh -huh. it, and it comprises a time where you had a lot of ice ages and warmings and stuff like that. So it's extremely important. Why did it warm up? Why did it cool down? I mean, this is long before mankind was dumping any kind of pollutants or, or, or CO2 into the atmosphere. And so uh, the meeting was basically to look at climate, what they call climate variability. And uh, we've got a number, or essentially, we've got some quotes here which point out, I think, really the two major findings, at least uh, oriented towards the climate, from this <laughs> meeting that was in Fayetteville last week. Let's, let's listen to those. Yeah, the, the, probably the most important message we have is that the climate extremes and climate variability of the last hundred years, when we had temperature and precipitation measurements, don't represent the full range of climate variability that is out there. And when we compare the 20th century record of, of climate variability, especially say temperature, global or northern hemisphere temperature, and compare that with the paleo record as derived from ice sheets or from pollen diagrams or from mud layers or from triggering data, we see that indeed the 20th century stands out as incredibly warm relative to the last thousand, perhaps the last 2,000 years. And this is, I think, placing our impact on climate in its proper historical context. So, do we and, know, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to put that, to translate that yeah. from a scientific, uh, the first uh, quote there uh, essentially is that it's very normal for the climate to go gaga. I in mean, other in other words, words, change up and down, right, all this, over the place. This is a totally new wor uh, way of looking at climate from, say, 20, 30 years ago. Climatologists have gone back thousands of years, and now they now are pretty certain that climate swings way up and, and down. And they can tell that through ice core samples and tree ring samples, that sort of stuff. Pile and that kind of stuff, that's right. Okay. And then the, the second, that was one point, which certainly uh, the studies there at this conference underscored. The second point is this. This really can be brought up by this graph here. This graph was produced by a number of scientists, and uh, 
uh, and it essentially shows a warming, it actually shows the temperature trends over the last 1,000 years, okay, using a baseline temperature, which they simply call zero, okay. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you first notice is there, there was an overall cooling from around A.D. 1000 to 1850, about the, around the year 1850. And then this is what has the scientists really excited. There appears to be, in fact, you know, a rapid warming when they combine both uh, things like tree rings and ice cores, and they combine it with surface temperatures recently, you know, that, that, that began really around 1880s, you could start putting in surface temperatures. It's a very pronounced warming from the late 1800s to the present. And uh, so the thinking is this, okay, climate goes gaga, so why isn't the current warming simply natural climate variability? And what the climatologists are now saying, at least many are saying, is that the rapid warming is so pronounced that they feel that there must be some kind of human, what they call forcing. There's some kind of a forcing going on, meaning primarily greenhouse gases introduced by human beings. That's what they suspect anyway. So we know that the temperature is going up. We know that it is, fluctuates throughout the centuries. Mm -hmm. But now we're saying that uh, people are causing this? Well, many scientists are, are coming, at least at this conference anyway, that I came across. I would say quite a few scientists believe that they've, they've, they're beginning to see the signal that of human caused warming. That's always been the problem. How do you differentiate that from natural warming? Okay. Um, now there are some downsides, of course, to global warming, but uh, you're telling us that uh, there have been no studies linking increasing number of hurricanes and in intensity to global right. warming. But That's there are some downsides. Yeah, there are some downsides. We've got some uh, listed here. The downside, rising sea levels. Now, originally, about 1995, when the Kyoto Protocol, which, which is based on the study put up by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, they, they anticipated a one and a half foot rise in sea level by the year 2100. That would be extremely significant. That has been downgraded down to about, roughly about a half a foot, uh, an increase in the sea level by, of a half a foot by the year 2100. Now, by the way, if you happen to live on the beach, that's significant. <laughs> that's quite significant. Another, another downside. Uh, more severe droughts. Uh, with warmer temperatures, you're going to have more evaporation, so it's thought that some places in the, in the world, perhaps even the central United States, might experience worse, longer droughts. Of course, th the other side of this is that some of the worst droughts also occurred during the cooling period mm. that you saw there in the, in the past 1,000 years, so that's a little iffy. Anyway, then we got ecosystem stress. This is one, certainly, uh, the scientists are simply not certain how quickly trees and plants and wildlife can adjust to rapidly changing climates. And here's the last one, is a real humdinger. A new ice age. This one is being argued by some scientists that with increased warming, you're going to have a melting of the polar ice caps to a certain extent, introducing fresh cold water, which will collapse what's called the thermohaline conveyor belt. It's oh, in the oceans? In the oceans. Oh. Yeah. They, and that, that conveyor belt currently carries very warm water, which warms, to the thing, uh, warms England and Ireland and the Scandinavia and also the northern United States. It's thought that a general collapse of that conveyor belt caused the little ice age in, in North America and Europe back in the uh, 1400s, 1500s. So, where we saw really violent weather. Well, we did, right. We actually had much worse storms under a colder, colder period than, than you, you see under warmer periods. So there's even thinking that global warming could actually cause a, a regional cooling. Or a new ice age. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is very strange. <laughs> when it gets hotter, it gets colder. <laughs> uh, talk to me a little. We want to look at some of the other, the flip side of... Uh, of yeah. global warming. It's, it does have a downside, but it also has an upside. Yeah, this is not, this is something I do, uh, you know, castigate media and, and for not really pointing out enough. To, to have a balanced view of this, we have to look at the upside, and there really is an upside to global warming. Plants love CO2. In study after study, plants, uh, you have an increased growth rates of anywhere from 25 to 100 percent under wow. a doubling of the CO2, which is what's supposed to occur by the year 20, 2050 or 2100, excuse me, from the current levels. Longer growing seasons. This appears to be already occurring, although there is debate whether it's simply a regional one in North America versus worldwide. But longer growing seasons, of course, mean, mean more planting, more harvest, blah, blah, blah. More food. More food. And also, by the way, animals like it better. Higher latitudes, more livable. So places like Canada, Russia, uh, and, uh, and places in the southern, like southern Africa, or you know, southern uh, uh, South America, would actually have a more livable climate. And also, you always remember, if we have a choice between warming and an ice age, we need warming. <laughs> Because ice ages are much worse. It's kind of tough to live through an ice age.